Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I did a little bit of cleanup of our data in particular when it comes uh, to researchers scanning the internet. So I took the opportunity to put together a quick diary explaining what the different groups are that we are tracking here. About 28,000 IP addresses are part of that list and we track 30 different entities that are scanning the internet for more or less research purposes. The hard part, of course, always what sort of defined as legitimate research. Personally, I include uh, IP address or groups in this list that identify themselves as researchers. So essentially, I take their word for it. And of course, I expect them uh, to do port scans and the like, but not to exploit any actual vulnerabilities. Not all of these research efforts are academic in nature. Some are commercial and often, for example, for uh, monitoring of attack surfaces. That's sort of one service that a lot of them are offering. But also some of them are offering based sort of a scoring system where you can check up which companies have how many systems exposed to the internet and how many of them are vulnerable. For more details, see the diary or just, well, uh, take a look at our API where you can retrieve uh, these IP addresses. And researchers from Casada did uh, document an interesting uh, set of events where, well, the bad guys are sort of going after each other. Now, while this is something uh, to not be too concerned about, of course, the problem here is also that the tool they are exploiting is a commonly used open source penetration testing tool, OpenBullet. OpenBullet is, uh, well, essentially a way to automate brute forcing, credential stuffing attacks. It interfaces with headless browsers to get sort of a more realistic interaction with websites. It even has sort of some uh, tricks and such in order to bypass some captchas. The trick here is that in order to use OpenBullet, you do need a configuration file, which essentially is a script that describes how to test a particular website. These scripts can get quite complex. Of course, many people using these open source testing tools don't necessarily have a lot of experience with creating these configuration files, so they're willing to download them from various hacker websites. And you may already see where this is going, but uh, the scripting language or these configuration files, uh, they are very feature rich. Uh, they can and yes, uh, download files from websites and then execute them, for example, uh, to implement some more advanced uh, configuration. That's exactly what's happening here. The malicious configuration file reaches out to GitHub, downloads a dropper that will then execute various uh, payloads, including in the end, uh, and that's the case that Casada here documented a uh, Python remote access tool. Of course, anything is possible at this point, and I wouldn't be surprised that uh, there's various variations of uh, this attacks out there installing different uh, backdoors or rats. Well, just like with anything you download, uh, any configuration that you sort of blindly copy uh, from a website, don't do it blindly. Do a review these configurations and make sure you're not infecting yourself. And of course, please use these tools responsibly. And of course, one thing that hackers do like to do is use legitimate tools for their purposes to lower the chances of being detected. One such tool is Cloudflare D. That's a tool that comes, as the name implies, from Cloudflare and allows you to establish tunnels through Cloudflare. These tunnels can use any protocol supported by Cloudflare. So HTTP2 and most notably Quick here are possible, which of course makes it difficult for a defender to necessarily inspect the content of the data being potentially exfiltrated here or whatever command and control connectivity is happening here. 
GuidePoint has a good blog uh, showing what they saw in the wild being used and uh, also what they're including here is uh, some detection techniques to figure out if Cloudflare tunnels are being used. Since this is a legitimate tool, there are certain behaviors uh, that are inherent to the tool that an attacker can't necessarily alter, like for example some very specific DNS uh, queries that are initiating the tunnel. Also for example port 7000 844 is used here as for the outbound connection so looking for this maybe blocking this port uh, may help avoid uh, this particular uh, malware well and this is it for today so thanks again for listening remember ever so often i'm also teaching some classes it's not too late yet to register for the next class actually in about two weeks i'll be teaching our defending web application theory class online only it will be taught in the chicago time zone and first week september i'll do the same in london live but it's also available online so if you're in europe and uh, don't really want to do the time change here and take a class uh, like in the middle of the night uh, your time well uh, london is another option for you for more details you'll always find a list of classes uh, that i'll be teaching at the very bottom of uh, the podcast show notes page well thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye